Welcome to yet another edition of the KSO Show, which is brought to you by Tallgrass Tap House at 320 East Points in Manhattan, I believe. I look at Flando to correct me on that, but he's busy. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Appreciate Tallgrass Tap House, all our sponsors. Today, we're joined by John Kurtz. John Kurtz, how you doing? Doing great. John Kurtz is of you know, K-Man. You can listen to 1350, 93.3. You can listen to the 610 podcast. What do you have to download the radio app? Is that what it is? Radio.com. Radio.com. But you can also get it on Apple. Well, that we've got, that. we've got, see, you got all sorts of things. We've got Mitch Fortner, the voice of K-State soccer, which is very important. We talk about that today on the game. Present. Present, correct. Mason, what do you do? Just uh, whatever I'm told. Well, that's a good, that's a good ability to have. We also have Grant Flanders. No Mike. He's running the board, uh, but he'll talk some. He'll yell some. I yell good. See, we're happy to have him. <laughs> today, guys, we're getting close to Big 12 Media Days. It's next week. We're recording this on what is today, Wednesday. You're probably hearing it a Thursday. But so I wanted to do a pod that wasn't like an out and out Big 12 predictions, K State predictions, like, you know, put your name on stuff, but a really good Big 12 football talk as we get ready. Because we're all, well, most of us are going. Somebody has to stay back and work at the station, right? Sorry, Mitch. I think it's an honor. We made a deal, right? I stay back, do the real work, and you guys bring me some Whataburger ketchup. Well, we owe you two spicy of, ketchup. We owe you two of those now. That's true. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> fair. They, fair. You know they do sell it at Walmart. Not anymore. I haven't, I haven't seen them there in a while. I saw it recently. Well, I, I looked this literally is a showdown. this showdown. I looked uh, literally this week and did not see it. Okay, all right. We'll find out. Walmart in a place that doesn't have whatever. Yeah, but they, I think they but do. But it's so popular. I mean, I think you know? they might. All right. Huh. Anyway, as important as that is, we're going to play a game that is a simple game. It's called Tell Me I'm Wrong. So, guys, I'm going to 15 statements to you related to Big 12 or K-State football. More K-State than other teams, you know, because KSO show, that kind of thing. And I just want someone, anybody, to pipe up and tell me I'm wrong and, and why I'm wrong. You know, there's no order. I'm not going to point at you. If it's just dead quiet, I might say Flanders. So you agree? And you'll say, oh, I wasn't listening. <laughs> but so the point of the game, again, is tell me I'm wrong. So you're going to hear something you don't like and you're going to come at me. And I'm not going to argue back. It's up to you guys to discuss that kind of stuff. I'm not going to defend myself because some of these things I believe, some I don't. They're just for discussion. Number one, tell me I'm wrong. K-State is not finishing better than eighth in this league. Tell me I'm wrong. Anybody? Anybody feel strong about that? Not, not really. I don't no. either. I don't either. Unfortunately. So let's we take it another level. So no one thinks that. If I said ninth, would you guys have got excited and said, okay, I think they're finishing better than ninth? Would yeah, anybody have got worked up about that one? Yeah. I think they eighth seems about right. Five and seven, finished eighth in the Big 12, somewhere around there. I would agree. Mitch, you had a thought? Well, I mean, I, I, I want to be optimistic and think K-State, yeah, of course they're going to finish higher than eighth and how disrespectful mm-hmm. is that for the media to pick k-state to finish ninth but there's teams out there that have the reputation of falling apart early falling apart late i think Middle. k-state can maybe uh hopefully i hope maybe take advantage of some of those accidents in the big 12 i would think so too i i feel like eights where i voted them i think eights about right and yeah we're splitting hairs on eight nine making that the difference but yeah i'm same as you guys so i got nothing to say here i mean the tough thing is you'll see in every prediction and in that big 12 preseason poll the the bottom four teams are all the teams with new head coaches. Right. So it's a little bit tough to project. I mean, I will, if you're going to leave some wiggle room, I would say that, that who knows what Neil Brown will be able to do in his first year, even if he's a good coach, because West Virginia, I mean, they only had one player on the all big 12 yep. team, just like K-State did. They're, they're kind of talent, uh, talentless. That's probably mm, a little harsh. Talent deprived. Talent deprived, devoid. Talent I was trying challenged. to think like devoid. You know, they lost a lot of talent from last year. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and then te- like Texas Tech, do I definitively know Texas Tech's going to be better than K-State? I mean, I don't know. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously Kansas there too. So I, it's possible, I think, that you could finish atop that group of teams with new coaches. Well said. I think number one, tell me I'm wrong. No one will tell me I'm wrong. We're all on the same page. That's good. Number two, I don't expect it either, but maybe somebody has some courage here and wants to come up and tell me I'm wrong. Number two, Oklahoma is the obvious favorite to win the Big 12. The point I'm getting at here, does anybody think Texas is the favorite to win the Big 12? Or, or even would well, argue it? You use the word obvious right, there. Right, correct. I mean, like I, I think Texas is going to be pretty good. I think Oklahoma... For a lot of reasons, like I just, I, I trust them more. Recent history, um, the the track record Lincoln Riley is now put together. The fact that they're bringing in a guy who was already a Heisman candidate as a quarterback, and they've just sent two straight guys to the Heisman, number one overall number pick. One. Like that, there is definite reason to believe Oklahoma is absolutely the favorite. But if you are going to make it like obvious, completely over the top, I mean, Texas got nine first place votes yep. in the the poll. I think there will. 
be some pull for that. Um, I would predict that they win 10 games and finish second. It just depends on, you know, if we're going to quibble over the word obvious. Kurtz is a smart guy because that was the point of it. I mean, I think we all think Oklahoma is the favorite, but I wanted to see if by throwing the word obvious in there, someone would say, well, wait a minute. You know, what about Texas? But Mason, would you... I think Oklahoma is the obvious favorite. I think Kurt said a lot of very smart stuff, and I'm not trying to like disagree with him. No, yeah. But you're shaking your head. Are you with me thinking they're, they're, they're just the clear obvious favorite? Yeah, I favorite? think they're the clear obvious because we've talked about it a lot recently because Sam Ellinger was the preseason offensive player of the year, which to me just isn't true. Because of Kurt. Yeah, because of Kurt. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in the Big 12, and Lincoln Riley is the best head coach in the Big 12. And then on top of that, you told me today you voted oh, for C.D. Lamb see. as your player of the year. And C.D. Lamb then is obviously the best wide receiver in the conference. So you already have three things going pretty darn well for you. And on top of that, all the other media people thought your linebacker is going to be the defensive player of the year. So there's not a whole lot that says otherwise. Well, in Oklahoma, is still pretty stacked, even a running back and an offensive Absolutely line. Yeah. And uh, I think Jalen Hurts, Hurts is the biggest factor here. Once he said, hey, I'm going to Oklahoma, that's probably the worst possible news the Oklahoma, or the uh, the Big 12 could receive at that point because that totally changed the game when it comes to who's going to be your favorite obviously Oklahoma was still going to get a lot of first place votes but the uh, probably the big name still left in the Big 12 was Sam Ellinger right. because he won a bowl game for Texas they won what nine games and did they uh, get to 10 with the bowl win or was it still nine I'd have to I look it, it was up. nine but I think yeah but either then way he finished right. with uh, hey Texas fans were back and that was a I mean everybody kind of heard that and it echoed for quite a while and then Jalen Hurst joins the Big 12. It's, I think it would come down to those two teams. I think we might see a, a doubleheader once again uh, in the in the Lone Star State. They did get to 10, but oh, nine regular wow. season, 10 and four. Well said. Now, this one I know I'm going to get. Maybe as many as all I'm wrongs, and that's okay. You know, it's part of this show here. So here we go. Tell me I'm wrong. C.D. Lamb is the best player in the Big 12. Uh... I think you're wrong. We we talked about this a little bit. Like I think Jalen Hurts is the best player in the the Big Twelve, or I think Jalen Hurts by the end of the year will be the best player in the Big Twelve. And some of that is about system and who is around him. Um, I think it's going to foster, you know, like a culture of him being the best player in the Big Twelve because right. Oklahoma just has the infrastructure. Like you you can have all of the talent and then if you go somewhere where it's not really the right fit or the right place you're not going to wind up looking like the best player in the league so I, I think that does have a lot to do with it it's just hard for me to look at Jalen Hurts a guy that won all those games at Alabama played in national yep. championship games uh put up big numbers in Lane Kiffin's offense you're just going to give him to a better Lane Kiffin in in Lincoln Riley now with Oklahoma's talent and CeeDee Lamb at receiver like he will help out and make him look good I would go with Jalen Hurts Anybody else have a different player other than Lamb or Hurts they want to suggest is the best in the league? Uh, not a different player. I just think that it for me it's tough right now to disagree because of the, the whole idea with Tua, Tua down in Alabama was obviously better than Jalen Hurts. So although I think Jalen Hurts is a great player and one of the best quarterbacks in the country, I'm not sure that if you're you know making all the talent relative that he's better than C.D. Lamb at this point in time. And John's probably absolutely right that being at Oklahoma is going to help him improve and he's going to become even better than what he is now. But like I just can't disagree a ton with you for saying that C.D. Lamb is probably the best player because he's the best wide receiver and probably with Jalen Hurts are still some unknown and I like the way he spells his name C-E-E-D-E-E -E -E -E. you know it's just, with the capital D just, exactly the capital you yeah. gotta figure it out man all right number four tell me I'm wrong Reggie Walker should not have been K-State's lone all big 12 pick I wrote that how it's written I'll say it again Reggie Walker should not have been K-State's lone all big 12 pick what's the response to that does anybody hear that statement and say oh, I agree or no that's wrong I agree I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't make a great argument for anybody else. The The argument that I would make is just that I think by the end of the year, Wyatt Hubert will, will be the guy that is best chance to be on that list. I think he's a star. I think he's going to be really good. But he hasn't – right now he doesn't have the resume. I mean, these preseason Correct. lists are about – it's like I was making the comparison to getting the big contract – you're being paid for what you've done, not what you're going to do. And that's why you have all these aging superstars making too much money. Like Reggie Walker is being, in this case, following the analogy, paid for what he's done before, which is be defensive freshman of the year and second team all Big 12 in 2017 and being a name that people know. 
Wyatt Heber just hasn't had the time to accumulate that and build that resume. But I, I think he's the guy that is going to have a better year. Uh, just to add to the question for for you guys, is Walker more deserving? The Hubert comparison is perfect. Like, and I wouldn't change a word. Is Walker more deserving than, say, Trey Deshaun or Scott France, Mason? Uh, I'm not sure because, you know, a lot of people probably say that, you know, maybe France didn't have the best year last year. So going into this year, you couldn't project too much. Trey Deshaun maybe has a little bit of an argument there to be more deserving than Reggie Walker. And if you're basing it off of last year, I would probably say that Trey Deshaun probably would have had a better argument than Reggie Walker just because Reggie Walker wasn't at the level that we saw him at, you know, that first year in the Big 12, which I think has really set the tone, like John said, for him to be on the list this year because he's a name that's shown up before and people know it. I'm trying to think if Trey Deshaun had many tackles at all last year. No, he started, not a lot of numbers from a D tackle spot. He I didn't. Thought, You're I right. He, yeah, I thought he started every game. He and did, he fin- and he finished with under 30 tackles. That to me does not deserve a spot on the All Big 12 preseason team. With Reggie Walker, though, I mean he's a he's a uh, forced fumble away from having the record at K State for most fo- forced fumbles. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty impressive number there. He has 16 career sacks. He, he's got decent numbers. But he, he could be becoming one of those guys that is so he went from you went from being very overrated to where he was so overrated. He's now become underrated because, you know what I'm talking about? When a guy gets a little overrated, it becomes very cool. Like I'm almost doing here to say, oh, Reggie Walker's not that good. When in reality, he might be pretty good now, but it became so hip to kind of call him overrated as a sophomore. When you don't look at his whole career like Mitch is like you're talking about. It's probably it's probably appropriate. I think he's just going to be really relied on this year on the edge. He's going to have to create some chaos to help out K State's defense. I don't think anybody's going to tell me I'm wrong with this, but Kurtz, I wrote this before your show today, and I wrote this before the Big Twelve media poll came out. I bet I have a proof on here somewhere of when I first wrote it or saved it. Just so you know, tell me I'm wrong. Iowa State will not finish third in the Big Twelve. I love the silence on this. I really do. Because, no way in hell. Because there's no third. gosh dang. Well, they might. I mean, because of the league, you know. But, I mean, they're. No, nah, they won't. They still won't. They'll probably tie with, like, three other teams for it. Fair enough. Number. We're not going to talk about it because Iowa State is Iowa State. No, nah, they're a good football team. They're going to be tough this year. I think they're going to win. They're an seven, okay eight, nine football games, team. Whatever. But I just don't think they're in that, that area yet. Number six, I put an ellipsis at the end, which means I'm going to say this with, like, some some uh, elevation in my tone towards the end. It's kind of half statement, half what do you guys think about this, okay? I wrote for number six, Texas Tech was pretty good last year when Alan Bowman was healthy. What I'm suggesting, um, I'll, I'll get to what I'm suggesting, is I have kind of pooed all over Tech in this preseason. No. Like looking around and projecting stuff and ranking them, I've been like Tech, Matt Wells, boring. same as you, Kurtz. Matt Wells, boring, don't know much about him, get him out. And then I look at it, I'm like, well, Bowman threw for a bajillion yards. I know Tech's, I know, I know you know, uh, Kingsbury and that offense, but he threw for an ungodly amount of yardage last year while he was playing. They still have those two big receivers back. They have four or five starters back in the offensive line. I guess what I'm just suggesting is maybe Tech is a team that we're all just dismissing a little too much. I I absolutely agree with you that Tech was probably better than we give him credit for last year with Alan Bowman. I just, you know, I th- started thinking about it today because I've kind of been in the same boat where I've thought less of Texas Tech and thought, well, you know what? Alan Bowman is a pretty decent quarterback. But then I just thought about it and I said, but would I rather have him than Skylar Thompson? And the answer is no. So Skylar Thompson, I think, is the better quarterback. And then when you look at defense, I feel way better about K-State's defense. Well, I guess I shouldn't say way better, but I feel a little bit better about them because there are at least some known commodities there. And so I, I just like K-State better. And I, But I would agree with you. Texas Tech probably doesn't get enough credit for Allen Bowman. I just think uh, Matt Wells runs a different kind of system than uh, – what was being done there in Lubbock right. and I think that can be a tough thing to change and getting the infrastructure in for that he's going to be more oriented to defense but do they have the players right now to really be that much better uh I think it could be a case where the offense regresses a little bit trying to adjust to the new way of life and the defense still isn't very good so I I don't have a ton of confidence in Texas Tech being great sounds like you think they're going to be great <laughs> that ballot you filled out and didn't send in did you have Tech first uh, I think I had him. Well, I had Tech tenth. Fair enough. See, and wow. I'll say like I don't. I mean, that's that's a that was the joke yeah. ballot. I personally don't think Tech's gonna be very good either. And I'm not trying to confuse people with this number six on my list. My point is, and I think you guys have already played on, played into it, is like I don't think they're gonna be very good. But I think we're all looking at them like 
no one has said this, like they're Kansas and they're not. You know what I mean? Like I think they're still more dangerous than that. They're, Go ahead. they're yeah. closer to what K-State is where you think they're not going to be that great, but – if they end up going six and six, seven and five, maybe you're not as surprised as if right. KU ends exactly. up winning four or five games this year. That's what I'm kind of going for. Like I'm not. I would probably pick them to win four or five games. But if they won six or seven, I'm not going to say, "Oh my gosh, how did Texas Tech do that?" You know, they've got Antoine Wesley back who had 1,500 yards at receiver last year. Vasher had 700. I think they have some guys. Like they could be a decent little team. Um, or they could be terrible, okay? Maybe maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. They're, they're, they're probably slightly more talented than the other three teams with that's, new coaches. That's kind of how I feel. It doesn't mean they'll be better. And I don't know if they will. I think I'm predicting they won't. But I I think, yeah, if you're just looking at pure talent, I, I'll take what they have, which isn't saying a ton. But, yeah, over some of those other teams. Number seven, I struggled to word. Hopefully you guys just get it and don't look at me <laughs> like I'm stupid because I really had a hard time wording this. I wrote that Matt Rule needs to have a season result consistent with a coach always associated with bigger jobs you hear matt rule about the jets about that kind of stuff like similar to to campbell i like matt rule but what has he done that that makes people think he's an nfl like click kingsbury just got a job i know that but like i think matt rule needs to have a year where he wins seven eight nine eight or nine games to really say and i know baylor's a tough job but i don't think he's done anything yet makes me think this guy is a red hot name now see i think People have gotten too much in the train of thought of just saying that Baylor's a tough job. Like, I understand that you were very much behind the eight ball after everything that went down with Art Bryles and Baylor in general that's happened there. But at some point, you have to say you're a school in the Big 12 Conference that plays in the state of Texas. There should be enough resources around you to where you can be good and if you've got a guy like matt rule leading you who's always associated with these big jobs you should be able to market him as a good coach but i so i would agree with you that you know you need to do more than win a couple games at temple get a job at baylor and then win six seven games from last year and call that good and that's not me you know, i want to hear what kurt said that's not me dumping on rule i think yeah. he's very good i'm just saying like when i see like the nfl jobs and stuff like man like i just feel like i got to see a little more but what were you gonna say about your friend matt rule uh i, I mean i think it's a little <laughs> harsh to say he won a couple games at temple i mean he did a really good job at temple i'm i'm trying to bring up his it is it, it you're right it wikipedia is. It, he did a good job i mean he, but, he won yeah. 10 there he won 10 games in back-to-back years at temple i mean like i think he's a pretty damn good coach um, like he played at Penn State, he has those tie-ins. He's East Coast. I mean, I think that stuff lends itself more toward being a, a hot name. I, I would just say, like, does he need to have an eight or nine win season for for Baylor fans to feel good about him and where the program's going? No, no, I, I don't think so. Does he need to have that in the eyes of like to to back up media hype? I mean, then yeah, probably. But I, I think realistic expectations and like a Baylor fan and, and the college football part of it he he's just fine winning six or seven games again because I think the way he's treated it he's in it for the long haul with a rebuild at Baylor whether or not he stays there sure. is another thing but that's that's the way that they've operated and handled well, that kind of feeds into my my point I wanted to bring up is that Matt Rule's a New York City kid that wound up at a Baptist school in Texas not his environment he, he ex- succeeded at a, at a uh, school in Philadelphia and now he's in Waco, Texas. I, I, I firmly believe that it, a, a city boy is a city boy and a country boy is a country boy. All these Texas coaches succeed in Texas, and you put the city kid in a, in a country place. I don't like Matt Rule's chances in, uh, in Baylor. At now, Baylor. But you're, now, from, you're from Morganville, and you love New York City. I'm an exception from, to the rule. I thought he was from New York. The, 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 the I'm the from exception. Manhattan, New York, All technically. Of place. Concordia. You're the exception to the Matt Rule? Oh. oh. Now, I will say in regards to Matt Rule, probably the smartest thing he has done is pretty much get to Baylor and embrace the idea that, yep, we're in a horrific spot right now. We are so bad. It's going to take some time to turn this thing around. And, I, you know, we're going to get Baylor on top or get back to a respectable point. Like, that's a smart way to keep your job and to keep people talking about you because you set the bar so low when you came in, and then you can just keep raising it every once in a while. And then, sure enough, you work your way to, your, to the top after, like, 10 years on a job. You all shared uh, sincerely. Flanders getting in a second. Flanders, what do you got? I want to add in, uh, maybe I don't know if someone brought it up, but the Penn State scandal that happened. Different scandals, obviously, but they didn't drop off much after that scandal. You didn't see a season where they missed a bowl game. You didn't see a season where they dropped under six wins. They always had at least seven wins, even 
the season after that scandal. Uh, obviously, completely two different scandals, but I think similar programs within their within their um, their conferences because you see Penn State at not the top tier team in their conference, but still they battled many years and and Baylor the same the same kind of respect. I feel like not a top tier team, but before their scandal, they were very competitive throughout. But I mean, they've had some really bad years to where I I, I agree with Matt. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I think you've all shared really good things. I'll say for Penn State Baylor, I see what you're saying. Like, Penn State's one of the best programs in the country. You know I mean? Like, that's one of the elite programs. It, it, within the Big Ten, your pecking order, you're right. They're not Ohio State. They're probably not even Michigan. They're probably not even – I mean, like, in current – so I get what Wisconsin, you're saying. Not even yeah. Wisconsin, right. But I think in general, I think they're a pretty good program. I think Flando was saying that they're not Michigan State. Oh, I think you're right. And, <laughs> and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say this, and I think I think – I think Kurtz was the one who best nailed what I read in the question. Like, I didn't question Matt Rule as a coach at Baylor. I think Kurtz nailed it. Like, I think winning six, seven, eight games at Baylor is a hell of a good accomplishment. My the way I worded it was like, if I'm hearing this guy mention with the Jets, you know, like he was last year, or with, you know, big, I, I, I don't know. I guess going winning more than seven games at Baylor is what I need to see for that. But, you know, they were 111 the year before. They won two. Ten, so I think Matt Rule's a very good coach. I just. My reason for writing this, I was surprised a year ago that he was such a hot name, I guess was my point. I, I, and I agree. Like, I don't think Matt Rule is a bad coach. He I said just, he's terrible. No, I just kind of, you know, he disregard his much. He won a few games. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, you, did. I mean, you know, hey, few, 10. Give me a couple of years at Temple. I bet you I could get him win 10 games. <laughs> I bet you you're right. At, number eight, man, I think we've discussed this so much, at least on the game today on, on K-Man. Um, but I want to say it anyway. Uh, Sam Ellinger is not the Big 12's best quarterback. Next. Let's look. I think we all. I th- okay, well, then I'll, re- I'll ask it a different way. Do we all think Do we all think Jalen Hurts is the Big 12's best quarterback? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We all do. So we'll go on. I think what Kurtz would talk about, we talked about some of the game today, if you haven't listened to it, is the idea that if you're just basing it off of, you know, Big 12 accomplishments and what Ellinger has done for Texas – Certainly, more than anybody else. Well, in the I, league, I think you in, know? we need to see how this plays out throughout the year. But like, I would guess by the end of the year, we would say Sam Ellinger will be more valuable to Texas than Jalen Hurts will be to Oklahoma. Even though Jalen Hurts is the better overall player and the better overall quarterback, because I think, I mean, like Texas has been this rudderless ship for a long time with a lot of talent, but they needed somebody to take charge and really steer the thing. And like Ellinger say what you will about him overhyped or not like he he has been that dude um yep. no doubt he's a personality he's a steadying force for them he's the leader uh he makes really tough kind of colin klein-esque plays to win them games so i think there's a ton of value to what he brings to the table at texas and i do think it's close like i think he's close to to jalen hurts i think he will be excellent i do do feel like though overall Jalen Hurts is probably the slightly better player. Well, and you look at this kind of fits into the discussion of Big Twelve Offensive Player of the Year. Most of us feel it's Jalen Hurts, obviously, over Sam Ellinger. But I look at it as, as well as you look at the supporting cast. Oklahoma probably has the best offensively quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, all that stuff, tight end yeah. offensive line. They have it all. And when you have Jalen Hurts with that supporting cast, it's hard to go with Sam Ellinger that probably doesn't have that quite of good a talent around him. You can only be as good as who's around you to make the big plays. Yeah, but you don't want to do it all yourself. But you guys, it's good because I think you guys speak in some ways to the same thing. Like it's just two different ways to look at it. A lot of people would look at, at the end of the year, we'll look at Jalen Hurts stats and say, he's the best player in the league. And I'll probably be one of those people because of what you just talked about too. If we rattle off, you know, Kennedy Brooks, CD lamb, uh, all their offensive line help. Um, Trey Sermon, thank you very much. The tight end is name always pronounced AD Calcaterra. Calcaterra. Uh, all the linemen they have back. They're going to have a better offense and put up better numbers. But it doesn't. And, and while one, one person can look at that and say that makes, that's part of what makes Hurts a better player, one person, one person like Kurtz could look at it and say, hey, you just routed off six guys that are better at Oklahoma than anybody on Texas, a skill team. Maybe Ellinger is better. We just aren't going to know because he's not going to play with those guys. But um, there's nobody else, right? Like nobody, nobody's throwing Brock Purdy in this or Alan Bowman. I'm not. Just making sure. Okay, good. All right, guys. I feel like number nine is one of my strongest statements. And I will say before I even tell you this, I believe what I wrote here. Like I believe this. I wrote that Oklahoma State is done winning 10 games a year annually. They've won. They've won at least ten, six of the last eight years. So they've done it a bunch. Um, they didn't last year. They went seven and six. 
I wrote that they're I, I so my point I'm getting at I think they're done being I think for the last 10 years maybe K-State could be in this if you really nitpick it maybe Baylor, Baylor TCU I think for the most part Okie State's been the third best team in the league the last 10 years I think that's over is my point so who likes the Pokes still? Who thinks they're still number three in the No, you're not this mm-hmm. year, but just long term. If you still like them the best, come come tell me. Who may be like talking like the rest of the Gundy era? Yeah, I, I guess what I'm getting at is I think that era is winding down. I think the disagreements with him and Mike Holder, the AD, have happened a lot. I think he looks for new jobs. And I like Gundy. I'm a Gundy fan. So as you hear me say this, I'm not taking shots at Gundy. He looks for new jobs every year, it seems like. I don't know who their quarterback is this year. I thought they were pretty bad last year. I just think they're done being that number three team in the conference. Yeah. So, yeah, through the Gundy era. Yeah, how do you I, want to look at I it? I think it's tough, too, because I like Mike Gundy a lot. And I, I think it'd be fun to see him keep being what he's been. But at some point, you just turn into the old guy that's trying to act young, and you, you're trying to fit in and try and beat the hip coach, when in reality, there are more hip coaches in the league, guys that are younger than you, and that actually play to that a little bit better. So I think that hurts a touch, and I just think that – you know, more recently, it seems like Oklahoma State is dipping a little bit further down than what they have. And at some point, that's just going to catch up to you where you just can't keep rebounding with 10 win seasons. I think some of the Gundy trying to be a hip coach, whatever, was really like uh, maybe not a media creation, but they really egged but a lot of more that, that on. than him trying. To yeah, do it, though. I think yeah. so. So I, I would balk at that a little bit. I balked at you. I think, yeah, take, your base. yeah I'll go take, your, take the second term. or whatever. Yeah. If Gundy stays, I think they will still be a relatively similar program. If if the point in this is that seems very tenuous and he might leave to like go be did. a coach like somewhere, then yes, I can get on board with that. Like if I'm projecting long term stability based on not knowing what happens with the coach, I can see your point and I would tend to lean that way. But I think Gundy is very good. I don't think he's going anywhere if he stays in terms of being a, a great coach and a, a really good program in the league. I like Gundy a lot. I would tell people my second favorite program in the Big 12 football and basketball is Oklahoma State. So I like Okie State. I'd like them to be successful. I just have that gut feeling. And it's bit gut. This is not like research. It's not smart guy stuff. I just feel like either Gundy's going to move on because I think that relationship's strained. And I think he's not, I think he's not appreciated enough. And I think he no, feels, he's not. And, and that's think, another key And I think element. he feels that way. Yes. So I think a combination, I think he will either move on or at some point a person who doesn't feel appreciated stops stops working as hard and i I don't think gundy's gonna stop working his ass off i believe he will continue to but even if you don't notice it i feel like if you feel unappreciated 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 eventually your 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 production drops just a notch and if that happens they won't win 10 games anymore and i hope i'm wrong because i like the pokes and who knows what the situation is like but at some point it just takes a couple of people that have some power to get in there and say that they're sick of the act that Gundy puts on at the end of every year and dancing with other schools and finally say, you know what, we don't need this anymore. Let's, you know, spend some money and try to get the new hot commodity to come to Oklahoma State. But I, I agree with what Kurt said. I do think that probably a lot of the Gundy stuff is you media driven with trying to make him seem like this people like young you, hip guy. Yeah. But I, I just think that at some point though that becomes a part of what helps you out. And Gundy's going to start getting to a point where they just can't keep up doing that with him and they'll start to care a little less about it. So it's not Gundy's fault at all that he had that image or that it's going to go away. But I just think it, it'll think it go away him. and it'll, it helped him in the beginning. Another interesting thing, if I'm not mistaken, and I just did a quick search to make sure he was still the AD, but Mike Holder's the AD there and so, yeah. he's really old. He's very old. So I, like, you hate old I know, people? Well, I just know there's been a <laughs> lot of speculation about what's going to happen with the athletic director. So I don't know how that'll impact. That'd make a huge, I, I would swing, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I would swing me back towards you. Like, yeah, if they did something else at AD, hell yeah. When Gundy I think, for AD. Gundy. I, I, I think it's uh, it's a former K State guy. And why am I spacing on his name? Chad Weiberg is. Oh, I think he is there. Is there, and I think he's kind of treat. Yeah, I think he's kind of he's going to be the favorite when that job comes open. So, well, that would don't know what his perception. relationship is with Gundy, but I think they work together. <laughs> as far as how, how tight the bond would be. Maybe not together, uh, but they work for the same university. Same university, correct. Yes. All right, guys, I'm going to get K-State back into this. K-State's first three Big 12 games are at Oklahoma State, home versus Baylor, and home versus TCU. So a roadie in Stillwater, two home games. Number 10, tell me I'm wrong. K-State needs to be 2-1 and one after its first three Big 12 games if it's going to make a bowl. Uh, so I'm saying they need to be they need to win two of those three if they're going to get to six wins. I, I see the I, schedule. Can you pull the schedule I, up for me? Man, I, I, I'm going to say you're wrong. I, 
I, I, I agree with me. Technically, I, I think technically, you're wrong. I think yes, you're wrong. yes, I think you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, because yeah. I, I view it as those first two games you get, and then I know past those first three Big Twelve games that there's going to be Iowa State at home at the end of the year. I don't care how good people think Iowa State is. K State can get that one. You're going to have West Virginia at home still, and you're going to be able to go on the road to KU. So that's four games right there that you could still get after those first three. It definitely goes a long way towards helping you if you get you know, two of those three, but I don't think they absolutely need them to end up being bowl eligible. Well, I hope K-State can win one of those three. I think the game at Oklahoma State is pretty crucial when it comes to overall height for the rest of the season. Plus, you have Alex Delton possibly playing it back in Manhattan the next week with TCU. However, if I'm not mistaken, aren't three of those, three of the top five in the preseason poll? So you still have four teams still on the schedule after that that are not in the top five and obviously would be more winnable if it pans out the way the media has predicted it. The, the way I look at it, and I guess, you know, I think if you take the question literally, of course the answer is no. Like they don't, there's other games, yeah. so they don't have to win all of those to do it. I, my point is, I don't think K-State's making a bowl if they drop, and I'm, and I'm, if they drop home games to Baylor and TCU. And they would have to to not go two and one in this scenario. So I don't, and yes, you're right. I think can, the Baylor can, one is fair. I think TCU might be a little better than what you're giving them credit for there. Sure. I mean, you're right. I'm just saying, I think if K-State's one and two, Right after the fir- first three games, I don't think they're going. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think they're going four and two. Well, they would only they have, have to go not, three and three. Going win this, yeah. Three I, don't th- and three. I don't think they're going three and three against Oklahoma, KU, Texas, West Virginia at Texas Tech and Iowa State. Is my point because because they're losing to Oklahoma and they're losing to Texas. So now they have to go three and one at KU versus West Virginia at Texas Tech versus Iowa State. I'm not picking them to go 3 and 1 in those four games. I mean, I'm not, but I think this is a tough exercise for everybody because no one is, uh, you know, right. like no one is. So, I, I think if they're good enough to get to a bowl, I think 3 and 1 in that stretch is a possibility. Yeah. If if they ultimately Would are. you rather have to go 3 and 1 there or go 2 and 1 against Baylor, TCU and Oklahoma State? Probably three and one there because three and one. those are the important games to win on your schedule later in the year. Because if if you win the two at the beginning, but then you your two losses there at the end say are Iowa State and KU, and you could have rather had those. You no, you're missing the point of the question. The point of the question is is going into that stretch. No, no, there's two paths to get to six wins. Don't think about what it means for your for your perception for your image. I'm just telling you. Imagine this is a fact. You can either go two and one against Baylor, Oklahoma State, and TCU with two of the three at home. I'm still picking the latter. Fair I, I feel yeah, like you it, answered it for a different reason. Yeah, I feel like it makes yeah. the bull the bull more meaningful. That's not the question. I understand. Do you understand? <laughs> no, I yeah, understand. I'm a little. I'm not sure. The question is this: Do you would you if you had to bet money, would you rather bet that K State's going to go two and one if against uh, Oklahoma? Excuse me, against against Baylor. I'm still taking the the, the last half. You'd I'm rather still need them to win one. one more game with two of them on the road. Yes, those four. fair enough. That's all I'm trying to ask. A yeah. part of the reason that I go that way is I tend to think that this team will get a decent amount better by the end of the year just because it's a new coaching staff and trying to get everything implemented and figure sure. out how that's going to work. Could very easily go the opposite way. Uh, they're, they're not real deep, and if injuries start to become a problem, it, it could go the opposite way. But being fairly optimistic about it, I think they will finish stronger than they start. That makes sense to me. I'm just saying from a gambling perspective, I would rather pick K-State to go 2-1 and one in those three games then three and one in the other four. And I think we're still not discussing that. I mean, I think you that see, makes more think, sense. Right. Well, that's that's what I'm. That's a point I'm bringing up to discuss that because I think the fact that those games are later in the year, the team may be coming together, understanding what sure. the staff is about, and like that's. I'm trying to discuss that by saying I, I just because of the timing of the games. Right. I, no, that's oh, fair yeah, enough. I'm just like, like sure. I understand it that way. So I understand what you're trying to to get me to understand. Yeah. But also, I feel like if you take out anything and you just say hey you can either you either have to win two of the three at home or and one on the road or you have to go three and one in your last four games or whatever it is like you have to take into the equation the type of team k-state is and will be and the people they're playing and all the other outside oh, sure circumstances you do. but i'm the opposite i'm opposite of you and kurtz I, with a team with no depth i would rather try and i think flanders said the same i would rather try to win the games at home early in the season with no depth then go on the road and win games in the last few when you're beat up. But, I mean, no one's right. That's like yeah. the point of the game. And I just wanted to say why I was asking the question, yeah. not to where it's better to win games later early, but, no, what games are more winnable? And yeah. I think it's Baylor and, and TCU at home than road games 
you know, late in the season. But yeah, even Iowa State coming in. Right. I, Iowa State's a much harder game to win at home to me than Baylor or TCU. You have yeah. a team picked third in the league or against Baylor and TCU. But if you guys uh, think Iowa State's easier to beat, then you're right. I think Baylor's probably easier to beat. I don't know that TCU's easier. I think to TCU's beat. gonna be terrible. Like just see, and, and that off. and that's just where we're yeah. different because I think TCU's gonna be probably better than some think. Yeah, like I just thought, like that's, yeah, yeah. I hate to say it, but, but is I, Alex I, Dalton starting those well, games? I think <laughs> I, no. I think someone else wins the quarterback job, and they wind up being a seven or eight win team. Probably they have so Dalton, you, another senior but so quarterback and freshman. Yeah, I'm just saying. So, are you? You think TCU is better than Iowa State this year? I said I don't know that I would like make that. I think they're pretty even, pretty which similar. is why, like yeah. in the poll, it was. I mean, I don't know with the margin off the top of my head, but it was really close. Like that group of Iowa State, TCU, Oklahoma State, Baylor. Like they were all right. pretty close. And Good if doubt. they're and if they're even, I'm taking TCU because I said it earlier today that I think Gary Patterson is still a better coach than Matt Campbell. Yeah, and it's okay. Like it's okay to say TCU is better than Iowa State. But I hear something that suggests you think that I'm going to ask you. Like, oh, yeah. so you think they're better than Iowa State? And it's okay if you do or don't. That's I'm not trying to suggest you should or shouldn't say that. But I think if we're going to say that, then I think when you say, like, I think TCU is going to be just god awful. I thought they were terrible last year. I thought they were the worst team in the Big 12 at the end of the season. Um, I thought they were worse than Kansas. Like, I just don't know how they're going to be good. Like, I mean, I watched K State play them down there in, in Fort Worth, and it was two oh. terrible teams. I don't think Delton's going to be the guy either. That's not the point. Like, I don't think it's going to be bad because it's Delton. I just think they're a really bad football team. I just know, you know? that, like, they're, I mean, they were hit by a crazy rash of injuries last year. And so they had a lot of – I mean, Phil Steele is a part of what makes this case. But they, they had a lot of younger players forced into action, and now they're going to throw back in the guys that were hurt. and They're going to have a lot of pretty talented depth on the defensive side of the ball. I, I think their defense is going to be really good and carry them. It could, it could be. I mean, abs- it absolutely could be. Um, question, I believe I'm on – I don't know what I'm on. 12 or 13 right now. Kansas would have been better with David Beatty as their head coach this year. Can I? Uh, you can tell me I'm right. You can tell me I'm wrong. You guys can do anything. I here. think you're. I think you're right in saying that this year they're probably better off. I think for the you know next year and the year after that they get a little bit of a bump from the Les Miles excitement at first, but ultimately I think they're just going to be in the same spot and kind of you know spin their tires in the mud for a couple more years. It feels like if you were to ask now Les Miles doesn't coach the games, so this probably isn't fair. But if you said like what's the biggest reason for excitement right now with Les Miles, it's that they, at least last I checked, still have a top 25 recruiting class, Absolutely. right? And yeah. so, like, that's not going to impact the team this year. Right. And you're going to have to go through the growing pains of adjusting to a new system. And Les Miles just seems like a loon who's not all the way there. And at some point, I mean, you can say he's a figurehead and all that, but at some point he's going to have to make some kind of decisions in the heat of battle and in the line of fire, right? And I don't I don't know that I feel great if I'm a Kansas fan about him doing that. So I actually think you could argue pretty easily that David Beatty, they'd be better off with David Beatty this year. I mean, Les Miles has won a national title. Everybody's <laughs> that's right. Everybody, that's at, uh, the KU fan base is really pumped up for the upcoming season. Rick Ross. I mean, they got Rick Ross to come to Lawrence. I he mean, said trash are you, are words you, about K State. Yeah, are you trash seriously K-State. trying to tell me David Beatty would be better for <laughs> KU right now? I don't think so. Rick Ross isn't coming to Lawrence with David Beatty at the helm. That's a good point. <laughs> Rick Ross is your goal. <laughs> Rick Ross isn't playing quarterback either, Mitch. Right. I, 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 oh, he'd be on the line. I thought KU was okay last year. You know, they, they win three games, you know, three, four. But I thought they were okay. I thought they were clearly got, getting better. And I thought they would have got better again under Beatty. I don't, I, I don't think he was the right long-term hire. I don't think they should have kept him necessarily. But I think, yeah, for this year... I would be more. I would be more as a K State person. I'd be more scared of KU this year in Lawrence if Beatty was their coach. I guess that's. I can say that personally, but I don't think I could take it any further than that. I think Miles, because of what Kurt right. at the start, is doing. But I only have three questions left. This next one, I felt a little guilty writing it. I'm going to say I believe it though. Lincoln Riley is already better than Prime Bob Stoops ever was at Oklahoma. Oh boy. Like, I, I have a lot of respect for Bob Stoops, and I know he won a national championship, and Lincoln Riley has not. But, man, I I, I believe this. Well, you've got to be wrong. Tell me I'm prime, wrong. Prime Bob Stoops did win one national championship. Right. And showed up and played in at least another one that I can remember. He did. They got beat by Florida. So... Lincoln Riley hasn't done that yet. That happened a couple times. The you know the most USC. exciting thing that Lincoln Riley has done so far is 
you know, they lost a pretty exciting semifinal game, and he's made two Heisman quarterbacks into first-round picks. So I don't think he's there yet. I think eventually he'll get to that point where we'll probably, you know, in 30 years look back and say, man, Lincoln Riley, he's probably the best coach we've ever seen in the Big 12. When football's dead 30 years from now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. While we're talking about it. I, I mean, I think Bob Stoops right now is still the – I would go Bob Stoops, barely. It's close, and the biggest thing, like if I'm Matt and I'm trying to make this point and arguing mm-hmm. it, when Bob Stoops won a national championship, there were not two programs like Alabama and Clemson Bingo. that existed in college football. Like that changes the calculus on this a whole heck of a lot. So, I I think it's I think it's a debate. I think it's a reasonable debate Stoops to have. Is probably the right answer. But I think Kurt, it's a reasonable Kurt debate to have for me. Yes, but man, I mean, it's a totally different deal. Stoops had a two. better one year than riley ever has so that and, and i mean and it won a national championship he went 13 and 0 he beat the k-state team twice that was really good beat nebraska i mean so i can't argue against that i know and I, so that probably makes Stoops better my reason though is like what kurt said is like it was a different landscape back then when he did it but he didn't have and to beat clemson or alabama to get to that national title it was georgia like sure. a trillion miles away from georgia too back then sure Bob Stoops prime at Oklahoma. Oklahoma was the Alabama we have today. They, they were the they dynasty. Were, they were not. They Alabama, sure? they correct. Were going to, they, had, they had one undefeated season. Multiple Al- Oklahoma going to most, did. multiple national championship games though. They were very they, good, but they were not Heisman Alabama. Trophy winners. They were not Alabama. I mean, well, Alabama won like yeah. four but titles. But they were the. Like, but yes, but they were that, Oklahoma. Alabama was the dynasty, but Oklahoma There's was only one. Pretty much top dog, along with probably you can argue is USC was there as well at the same time. The reason I would say that was the Clemson. I would say Stoops has a better one year, obviously, than Riley's ever had. I mean, by winning the national championship, um, going thirteen and no doubt about it. But I don't, I don't, think, I don't know if I can find a two year stretch where he was ever as good because Riley in his last two years, correct me if I'm wrong, both playoff appearances, both Heisman Trophy winners, number one picks, big number one titles. Picks. Like Oklahoma never had a back. Now, I mean, they never played for titles two years in a row. Um. I'm just looking through it. I mean, they played in the BCS three years in a row at one point. They also had to deal with Bob Stoops' brother so, on, the, on the defensive yeah, end. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I, I meant it more or less to bring up the fact that I think that I think Lincoln Riley's a really good coach. I do, too. Is that agreed upon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well here, Mason, to, to your point about the Georgia thing, like that they didn't play Alabama or Clemson, you also you, you had to finish in the top two in the BCS era when Stoops was doing it. And if you don't have two dominant programs like that, it's way easier for – because what's the perception of everybody? It's that Alabama and Clemson are head and shoulders above everyone else, no matter what Oklahoma and does. Georgia. I mean, you mentioned Georgia. Right. I so, Georgia. And, in that well, yeah, and, and Georgia yeah. gets the – I say Georgia use, like the Boise State Well, yeah, no, and I kind of use that just to, you know, yeah. you know, my shtick of, ah, whatever. You get Alabama and Clemson like, out of the way, and you don't have them dominating the public perception of who's good. That and, you're Alabama And a it's a computer. You just have to get in the computer system top two as opposed to the human, human element here of it – it's not apples to apples to say that. No, it's point. not. But I, I just think right now, Bob Stoops, accomplish, accomplishment-wise, you have to say that it was him. And, I mean, that year Oklahoma lost to Georgia in the Rose Bowl. I mean, Georgia, they went on to lose to Alabama in overtime. They were still probably the best team that year, right. I think. They just you know didn't win the last game of the season. I would argue... Bob Stoops Prime is actually going to begin in January of 2020 oh. when the ball goes off the tee Listen, in the XFL. I can't, I can't touch that. That's exactly right. So, I mean, I, I write that knowing that Stoops, I, it's going to be an impossible argument to win, but I thought Kurtz did a good job of framing it. And I think it's I think it's a different landscape now than it was in 2000. And I think I think these teams, I'll say this, doesn't mean anything. And you can't, this is one of those fun things I can throw out there and it'll never happen. So you don't have to prove anything wrong. I think this team's better I think these last teams were both better than the 2000 team. Like that 2000 team that won it, I don't know if they were one of the five best teams in the country. They were just really freaking good at getting things done when it needed to happen. That was the other thing I was going to say. And that counts, but they weren't, they weren't as good as the last two teams. If you line up like, one of the last two Oklahoma teams against that 2000 Oklahoma team, them. I mean, I would, yeah, I would absolutely take the Lincoln Riley Oklahoma teams for sure. That 2000 Oklahoma team was I mean, very talented, very good were, were man. Lucky. Josh Heupel. Josh Heupel. I mean, they were fortunate, I, I thought. Mean, that guy. They were fortunate <laughs> to beat K-State in Manhattan. They were fortunate to beat K-State in Kansas City. They were fortunate to beat A&M in College Station. They were fortunate to beat Oklahoma State in Stillwater late in the year. 
They were they, more like they, they over hypo. They controlled Florida State in the national title game. Over hypo, correct? Florida, Florida State hypo. wasn't that good. Florida you know, State wasn't like, that good that year. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Yeah. I'm just telling you. No, your I, Stoops. I, your Stoops group that you think's the greatest team that ever look, played. I'm just saying. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Here's I, the thing. Link, I think what Matt's trying to say is Lincoln Riley is a lot cooler than Bob Stoops. Yeah. Like, oh, Lincoln yeah, Riley sure. is a lot cooler than Bob. Lincoln Stoops. Riley is probably a better coach right now than Bob Stoops I like Bob was Stoops too. in a stretch. I, I mean, but I think he just he does have the national championship and ultimately in college football that's all that matters wasn't even his I, players <laughs> yeah it was john blake's <laughs> john team. blake's team that wasn't even Lincoln <laughs> riley's players I, oh, hey, oh i don't understand the argument at all saying oklahoma's not one of the best teams in the country when they won the national title and they were in the same conference as you know k-state nebraska results driven texas because, because the be- it's possible for the best team not to win the national championship oh, okay. yeah k-state 2012 i mean like notre, notre dame played for the national yeah. title in 2012 and they were probably like the 10th i think you're in the confusing country, right? deserving with best they absolutely deserved it they deserved to be called the national champion of the best team in the country i don't think they were the best you know i mean like if we're just gonna say the teams that win the championships always the best then why do we talk about sports we should just watch it and say well raptors won it they're the best period I keep looking at Flanders to talk, but he doesn't he doesn't have a mic, and so he's not gonna respond to these things. Um okay, I have two left when we done with this thing. West Virginia feels a lot less exciting with Dana Holgerson gone. Tell me I'm wrong. A lot I less can. Red Bull on the sideline, I would imagine. More hair. Are you excited for Neil Brown? Kurt? Neil I'm just Brown. Not. Dana Holgerson. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, That's it enough. doesn't have the same kind of pizzazz to it. I, Holgerson has some great style. The hair's like outstanding. You, you knew that yeah. Holgerson was going to have like this dynamic offense. Yeah. And I don't say some fun stuff here and there. Yeah. I'll yeah. be honest. I don't know enough about Neil Brown. Me neither. That's part of the problem. Is I I don't know enough about Neil it's a very Brown. Very basic name. I don't. Yeah, it is a Neil, very very Neil basic Brown. name. Neil Brown. Big yeah. Neil. Yeah. Very basic Two name. Two syllables. Holgerson had like this. Oh, wild card feel to him yes you know? he's like the wild card at the neil, end of the show yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. neil he's brown sunny. could be you know mike gundy but he's not named mike gundy like no. gundy is so much cooler than neil brown you know i mean you can't neil, even properly chant neil neil brown no it's two one syllable yeah. boring it's words. just neil 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 neil, <laughs> neil, neil. <laughs> and then everybody's state taking really, a knee on the sideline yeah, the west was. virginia fans say no 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 more football case they really dodged a bullet in this one yeah they sure what. did that's what yeah uh, i think neil brown will be fine i'm not trying to you know i'm just saying like, i thought dana holgerson was one of the my point is was one of the, one of the more fun guys in the yes. league yes. And he's gone yeah you know i, I will miss you guys probably listen to the big 12 teleconference every oh, monday Boy. Uh, when it's football season. Until, until K-State's coach finishes Dan- speaking. <laughs> Dana, <laughs> Dana Holgerson has to clear his throat like it's, every sentence. <clears throat> like, it's, it's, that's true. It's, well, I mean, it's he, he just always looks like he's got a little bit of a cold or something keeping him down. Chew it tobacco. Come on. Guys, last question. Probably. We're going to wrap this up. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> KSO Show brought to you by Tallgrass Tap House, Bourbon and Baker, Harry's. Uh, appreciate the time you guys have spent doing this. Again, tell me I'm wrong. Get that meatloaf. Last one. What? Seriously, the meatloaf what? at Tallgrass? Are you serious? No, it's a good conversation. Okay. We're by the sponsor right here. I know. I was really confused on what he was talking about. Oh no. First. Get that meatloaf. Get that meatloaf. Did you see how serious the Mitch's face was when he said that? <laughs> I need meatloaf. you to participate in this question. Okay. So I'm going to go around in a circle. I'm going to go from Mitch to you. <laughs> To Mason to Kurtz. Okay. And then so I'm gonna ask you case so more or less tell me your opinion on this statement instead okay. of tell me I'm wrong. And I'm not gonna argue, I'm just gonna listen to you guys. <laughs> the Big Twelve should not have a conference championship game, starting with Mitch. I think they definitely should. Mitch thinks they have a should. conference championship game. Mitch likes it. Mitch, However, Mitch loves conference championship Saturday. I don't like it played on a neutral site. I think it should be played mm. at the home venue of the top team in the Big 12. The, the one seed. Wow. What are we? <laughs> what is this? The I was thinking more of, good the, stuff. of Conference USA. But. Does the Pac-12 do that? Do they, they did for a little while. They played at the home team's venue. I don't think they do anymore, though. So they used to be a Power 5 that did that. Yeah. I know because I remember Oregon played the Pac-12 title game at home once. Santa Clara is where they play it. <laughs> Flanders, um, the Big Twelve should not have a conference championship game. How does that make you feel? Uh, I, I think, think they, they should. should. Yeah, I think, they, think should they should too. too. I mean, I get the I get the other argument. That one of these two fine gentlemen right here are probably going to come up with. It might be a clean sweep. Or it might be a clean sweep. But I get that argument of the fact that you're already playing every team once. So why do you have to play one more game? Why do you have to add that one more game on your schedule when you're already playing everyone once? But I, th- I still think that one game matters a lot. And with the college football playoff, this probably will be a clean sleep now, 
now that I think about it, college football playoff, you need that 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 championship oh boy, game data point. because Here we've comes. yeah because we've because we've <laughs> seen in years past when Big Twelve gets pushed out before they had the conference championship game and then this past year they have a conference championship game Poor and they get put in there. Do you know why the Big Twelve got pushed out those years? Because it was it's Baylor because, and TCU. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. wasn't Oklahoma. <laughs> right. The Big Twelve does not need a Big Twelve title game yes, where we get with me. where we get a rematch of the first year. We got to see Oklahoma kill TCU again. Hooray. Then last year, we knew that Oklahoma losing to Texas the first time was a fluke because Texas almost blew it. So Oklahoma came out, <laughs> and Texas it. was it we was did. somewhat close, but Texas didn't really ever have a chance to win it. Yeah, the Big 12 championship game is stupid. And yeah, let's go back, let's totally go back to, to the one true champion era, you know? One true champion. I, I was very against the Big 12 championship game when it, when it came I into was. play. Now I'm more. Uh, I'm a little – but – Match we do have to be careful to Sam not 50. like the recency bias of this. I still would argue there are going to be more times where you would cannibalize yourself a la yes. K State A and M um than not. And it's so easy. Everybody is so reactionary on this where like you had the Baylor TCU thing and then everybody freaks they out, you gotta do something different. Yeah. And now it's the other way where it's like, well, look, you know, it seemed to be good last year. The one thing I will say is that even if it is at Oklahoma or at Texas, the fact that you do have to play this um, round robin schedule where it's tougher than the SEC, where you're exactly. missing out on all these teams, it does give you a, a better chance to have a slip up. As weird as that sounds, that you would have to play that extra game at the end of the year, it gives you a chance if you're Oklahoma to lose a stupid game to Iowa State and then come back and validate it with Flando's extra data point at the end. So that's that is what gives me the pause. But I still tend to believe that more often than not, there would be more times where you hurt yourself like K State against A and M. To me, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to need a conference championship game. And this is my legitimate thought on it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to need a conference championship game when everybody has already played everybody yep. once. You know, I could see where you're sitting out right now where if you just decide we're gonna split it up five teams here five teams there and we'll just make two divisions of five and then you play your four teams every year and then a select group from each one and then add another non-conference game or something that makes sense to where you don't play everybody in the conference then and it makes like it, it makes it seem like it's actually meaningful because you get another team in there that maybe shouldn't be we've seen in the past though it's it's come back to hurt the big 12 but you also, when you're the Big 12 and you're a Power 5 conference, when everybody else has sure. a conference championship game, you have to keep up with everybody else. But here's the thing. the Oklahoma has been so good the last two years with Mayfield and Murray that if the Big 12 doesn't have a title game and they end the year like they did, they still probably get in because you're in a situation with the SEC right now where they're probably going to cannibalize themselves in the championship game because it'll be Alabama against somebody who could be up there. I just think that the Big 12, it's pretty much unnecessary for the Big 12. And it doesn't, to me, do a lot of good for eyeballs if you want that because you're playing it at noon on a Saturday when nobody really cares it felt like it was really big time and meaningful when it was 7 30 on saturday night on abc on championship saturday but now you feel like yeah but now you feel like you're the american athletic conference playing it at 11 a.m and packing you know cowboy stadium 75 percent full i'll say i think it's a scenario where i think i think again both sides both sides are right i think mitch is right from and flanders the perception is you have to do it because the other Power Five conferences do it, and it does open up a, an excuse for the And that committee. rule was pretty much made for the Correct. Big 12 to say you don't have to have 12. So members. I think you have to do it, but I'd be more with you and Kurtz. On, I don't think they should have to do it. I don't think they should. My concern with the Big 12 is, man, they may, to me, they make it really hard for their team to go to the college football playoff because they— Look at the SEC. The SEC is not going to make you play a Power 5 non-conference game. The Big 12 is. So that's already one step. It's going to be tougher if you're a Big 12 team than an SEC team. Um, you're also going to play all nine teams in your conference, and there's no chance of you dodging the good teams. It can't happen. Maybe your league's down, and you get lucky that way, but you aren't going to ever have a season where you miss Bama, Georgia, and Florida if you're, I don't know, the, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and meanwhile, and, some of those teams, they don't see Alabama for three, four right. years. So, I mean, if you're in the SEC, you could have, you could theoretically avoid playing the three best teams in the conference, not have to play a Power 5 team in the non-conference, and then win one game in the conference championship, probably it's a really good team. Right to win the conference. I just think I just think the Big Twelve makes it so hard to get in the playoffs. And the SEC and gonna, as a yeah. conference allows you to have that game at the end of the year against a non con team, yep. which is smart, by the way. Really smart of them. 
but that's something the Big 12 doesn't do. Right. And then I would agree, too, with the idea that you guys said. I, I can't find an example of a Big 12 team making it because of the Big 12 championship, but I can find a number of them not because of it. 96, Nebraska didn't make it because they lost to Texas in the Big 12 championship. 98, K-State didn't make it because they lost to A&M. There may be more. There may not be. I, uh, Texas losing to Colorado in 01 cost Texas the national championship. So I can think of at least three times the Big 12 title game has cost the Big 12 a chance to play for the national championship. To be fair, though, to you guys, to be fair, in your point, that was a different landscape, too, like we said earlier. Only two teams were going. Maybe a four went. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Nebraska goes in 96 or K-State goes in 98. So it's not completely fair to say it's hurt more than it's helped, but I still think more often than not, it will hurt more than it helps. And maybe it's a situation where this year things are different because Texas will be better than what they were last year. I'm fairly confident of that. So maybe it makes it a more inspiring game. And then on top of that, maybe one random year it helps where you say have the five and the six team in the country playing in your championship and so whoever wins that they probably say well they right. had an extra win against the top five opponent they can play in the the final four so uh, i just don't think it's going to help you more than it hurts you ultimately i just want that to happen i'm sorry i don't want that to ha- and it may it may happen this year i just want that to happen and as soon as i hear one of those talking heads even if it's just you know bluster saying well we put in Texas because they beat Oklahoma in the Big 12 then I'll probably feel better even if it's not true I'll feel better I just don't think that's happened yet and I feel like that flip side has I mean every every argument you guys have made for a reason to not have a conference championship you can relate that to every conference in college football as to a reason why they shouldn't have it because they could play themselves out because they lose a ball game that happens sure. in every conference and it usually happens to at least somebody every year last couple of years if I remember right it's been it's pretty, been pretty non-hectic when it comes to the top four. It's been pretty much the same going into the conference I, championships, and everybody wins, and it all stays the same. So there hasn't been much chaos lately. There's going to be a time where there's going to be complete chaos, and it comes down to the Big 12 needing – somebody needs to win this ball game to get into the college football playoff. I think the reason I'm a baby about this is just the whole – I want a level playing field for every team in every conference. I want – I want. I don't have all the, all the answers – But I wish it was if you're in a Power 5 conference, you are playing eight conference games, four non-conference games, one will be against a Power 5 opponent, and you'll play a conference championship. If they just did that for everybody, no one could complain and say, I mean, yes, the conference stuff, of course. But like right now, like Mitch, to his credit, says everyone has to play a conference championship game. They could all lose it. They could all argue it. You're right. They all could. But like we just said... The SEC doesn't play nine conference games. The Big 12 does. So it's already, they already play one more than the SEC does. So they're already playing more. And so, but it's, I, just want, I just want it to be uniform. Whatever and, it is, I don't care. Just make it the same rule for every team. And ultimately, I don't think Big 12 people can complain about it too much, though, because it's really their fault that they're in this situation yeah, to play it with 10 that's, teams yeah. because you, know, you can't find two other teams that you either want to join the Big 12 or or that you feel willing to add to the conference. Because I would much rather it go back to the way it was, where you play eight conference games and four non-conference games and decide how you want that schedule. And so the North winner plays the South. But right now, you can't do that because if you say everybody plays eight conference games, you get stuck with, well, you just didn't play one team right. in your conference. So that makes things a little odd. So it's just going to have to wait until either the Big 12 – does at some point eventually add two more or you get to a point where we get these mega conferences where you say everybody gets 16 we have just four giant conferences with with having oklahoma winning that 13th or 12th or 11th whatever game that is that big 12 title game you're sitting as a four seed yet if you're not playing that game and you have ohio state sitting there as the five and they go into indianapolis and crush Wisconsin, who's a top 10 team. I mean, how do you not put Ohio State in that position then? Well, because they lost Virginia here's, Tech at home. Because right? right. the, I count the whole season. But no, I'm just <laughs> making fun. But but yeah, there's a lot of people who there's a lot of people who do look at it that way, and people on the committee probably look at it that way. So the the frustrating part to your point, Matt, is that the SEC has zero zero problems with like perception. No one's gonna exactly. no one will question like how tough. But then SEC team's the road was, yep. but yet the Big 12, the reason the Big 12 has been bullied into having a conference championship game is because they say, how can you guys not have a conference championship game? You guys are a bunch of wussies instead of like really looking into it and realizing, OK, actually going through and playing everybody is a tougher route than doing what the SEC does where you right. can miss those. But the perception is so strong that, well, SEC overall the Big 12 has to do all these things to try and make it harder when really it, it shouldn't be. And let, let's be honest here. The only conference championship games that have really mattered in the last five years have been the SEC and the Big 10. Because other than that, nobody cares about the Pac-12 
because normally they just have one good team in the last few years. It hasn't even been that. Then the ACC, Clemson's been so good that they haven't even had to worry about the team they play being a legitimate threat. Yeah. But if Clemson slips up there, then you run into a giant mess of, well, we just had one of our two best teams lose in their conference championship. What happens? So the Big 12 is the only one that has really put themselves in a legitimate position to where their conference championship game could take one of their qualifiers for that playoff out of the equation. I see your point. Because of how tough the competition is. Because the SEC is. winner's going to go. Because think Period. about... The Big 12 winner may not yeah, go. Think if, about yeah. last the last two years on who Oklahoma would have played if it was North and South. You know, there'd have to be two other would've teams. Been, been, but last year, it would have been Iowa, Iowa State. State, probably, that they well, end up playing, yeah. or West Virginia. So, yeah, I mean, you just aren't challenged in these conference championships unless you're in the Big 12 because you know you're playing number two. And the Big 12 says it. You know, it's the only conference championship where you're guaranteed to have one versus two. And that's true, and it's probably going to hurt the Big 12 at some point. But right now, I don't know that it does them any good or it hurts them at all. I, I think you guys make the right point saying – that the the country hasn't realized the rest of the country other conferences like the SEC have not in the uh, in the in the committee don't realize how tough it is in the Big 12 to play everybody run the gauntlet and win eight of the nine but that at that point now it leaves you with two options you play and win the conference championship game or you have to beef up your non-con and that's pretty much impossible anyways because good luck finding two really good teams to play uh, and also the FCS or, yeah the FCS game against Indiana State or whatever the biggest so, thing that the big so you have to step up your non-con is just for OU to beat Alabama in the national championship yeah. this year and then OU just keep dominating and then have them turn into the Alabama and then people just don't question the top right. half of your league and That's the big right, 12 right. becomes just as well good said. as the SEC and stuff becomes meaningless after that well said. I think that's what it is. People don't question yeah. the top of the SEC. They just assume the top six in the SEC are all top ten teams. Yeah. And we're not going to see them play anybody else because they're not going to play Power Fives in the non-conference. And two and or three just, of those top six right. aren't going to play even the other And they're not going to play each teams. other. It's, yeah, we're, we can talk about this forever. I think we're all mad as Big 12 country yes. people yes. Yeah. that the Big 12 no is probably right in saying it has the hardest championship to win and we all probably have some problems with that but they can't change it yep. because if they do and make it a notch easier people won't give them the respect yep. and say well sec is better big Ten's better so mitch is probably right fighters are probably right they probably have to have it but i don't think they should have yeah to have because it. if you're the number four team and you sit out championship week and number six beats number five that championship week well then you're probably looking at it and saying man they look pretty good right now. They just beat a top five right. team. Let's slide them in there. Right, but can't you know? Yeah, but can't they just judge the season and say? I agree. And say Oklahoma went nine. And, I mean, I know we're talking on the same team, but say Oklahoma went nine and zero against Big Twelve competition. That's better than and ultimately so -and eight and one. There probably you know? shouldn't be conference can't. championships in general. Unless because, they went to super teams or super conferences yes, yeah. and then just made it the NFL and had four 16-team divisions that yeah. all played in the playoffs. In the Big 12, you still have the best odds of making the conference championship anyway over the other Power 5 conferences anyway. You have a 20% chance of getting in. Yes, I would agree with that. Even in divisions, six or more, that's still less than 20%. That's a great point, too, because while, while mathematically it's easier to get to the Big 12 championship of the Big 12, I think it was easier to win the Big 12 with 12 teams in the old North-South thing because all K-State had to do was win the North yeah. I always and then point beat out Oklahoma you know, once. That to, where now, get past Nebraska. to where now you've got to go basically 8-1. and one That to first win the league, year right? Snyder came back, all they had to do was could have been six beat, and six and beat the Nebraska Big and go 6-6, six and six, they're bowl eligible, yeah. and they play in the Big 12 championship, or... They lose it and like they did, and they end up not playing for anything. Their season just ends. So it's a neat quirk why I think math, math, you can both say mathematically it's easiest to get to the Big 12 championship, which is accurate, but also probably say it's the hardest one to win. I mean, which is interesting that it could be the easiest to get there, but the hardest league maybe to win. It was not a it was not a good development for teams in K State's position. No, there, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, you know? that's I guess that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go. I want to go back to the North have. South where I can just convince myself if they can get to eight wins. Two thousand and three, man, exactly. they had a disaster. Because, because, disaster the season. because the North 2012 the doesn't happen. <laughs> Even if K-State gets through that regular season and they have to play Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship, right. they probably lose to Oklahoma that second and what, time. And then, neither and then of them we go, don't even have that thought. And neither go because they split against each yep. other. But at least know? they got that opportunity to make that natty because there wasn't a Big 12 That's title true. game back they then. They would have gone without they it. They lost to that? Baylor. So what are you saying? That there shouldn't be a Big 12 title game? That's the no, boat that, you're I made the point right there that there <laughs> should. Oh! should be 10 teams in the playoffs. Just like we said, then you don't need 10 the, teams then you in the playoffs. Then you don't, oh, oh, what, what was eight. it? Eight, eight, yeah, eight okay. teams in the playoffs. Yeah. You get all the, the Power 5 conference yep. teams in Heck there. Yes. 
two, preach. Two, two, I am two of the at large, at large, and then and then one from the the group of five. Group of five. That's school. my plan. I, plan I, honestly, <laughs> and then you don't need a conference to, to make to make a uh, a true point. I am completely against an eight team. Oh, really. Playoff. At that point, you're asking these guys to play too much football. Yeah, yeah take away, take, take, cut away game. Are we still recording? Is this still going? I mean, yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, that's playing. a good point. That's a good, that's, you know. We'll talk about this off the air because I bet if you're still listening, you're like, I thought this was a big full pod. But yeah, just cut a game off. I want to really thank Mitch, Kurtz, Mason, Flanders. Uh, I don't want to diminish Flanders' thanks, but Mitch, Mason, and Kurtz, like this isn't their job. I mean, so they come out here and they do this because they like talking about this kind of stuff. Pro bono. And talking to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm not giving them anything for this. So <laughs> It's for the uh, brand. They get ribs. So, exactly. They got ribs. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, we did. Very good. good. Thank so, you, guys. So uh, thanks to them. Thanks to Flanders for running this. Gosh. We've been talking for so long, I forgot how we ended. Tell your friends.